Hi everybody. It is September 22nd, 2019. 22nd already. We're almost through September. Wow. All right. Everything is speeding up, including time. Now, in the last video that I posted, I said I was going to be picking up right here where I left off in this article. Extinction Rebellion, Green New Deal, the rebranding of global capitalism, but I feel actually the need to start with this, um, this article. Uh, I, I, you know, I just came across this, I think, maybe I came across it um, years ago and posted on it. Uncovered government report proves climate data unfit for purpose back in August 2017. You know, from the start, real scientists have been coming out trashing the IPCC. Real scientists have wanted the IPCC to be disbanded, get rid of it. They have been saying that they are hurting science itself, that they are bringing distrust to science. Well, they brought it. Back in 1999, the National Academy of Sciences, the research arm of the National Research Council, released a study expressing concern about the accuracy of the data used in the debate over climate change. They said there are deficiencies in the accuracy, quality, and continuity of the records that place serious limitations on the confidence that can be placed in the research results. The people who reach these conclusions and their affiliations, this is the list, prominent scientists, uh, two that actually helped found the IPCC and the promotion of its ideas. You can read everything. I will link to everything below. I can't go into details. I'm going to be skipping names and yada, yada, yada. But don't come back at me and say that everything I'm saying is just my opinion. You never give us facts and evidence. I've been doing this for eight years. I'm really tired now. So you want the facts and evidence? I link to it. You want the details? I link to all of the details. Go underneath my video, click on a link. Do some research yourself. In short, they knew they would have to create, make up, or modify data to even approximate a result. The trouble is the data was so inadequate that even with their actions, the results could not approximate reality. And now we are living in such a constructed, contrived reality that well, for many of us, it's kind of difficult to um, manage. It's gotten so big, guys. It is so big. Um, there's a lot of very good articles on this site here, Principia Scientific International. Uh, one of the good articles, sorry, um, follow the climate change money. Hey, follow the climate change money. Follow the money. So many adults know that, well, you follow the money, but they believe the lies. Well, laziness, you know what that does? It gets us to live in a totalitarian society. It gets us where we are right now. All right, I want to just read a few little highlights of this uh, article, but the money, your money, your money, taxpayer money. It's been, think of everything that's going on. Think of how many Americans are hurting. Think about how many can't afford uh, medical care. Think about how many are, wow, ending up homeless. And that number just continues to rise. And oh, we just can't manage to get any kind of affordable housing. Think about all the wars that are unnecessary, but hey, every president that comes in that has said that on their campaign trail, they just continue the wars. 
Think about how much money is going into the military industrial complex, but then think about how much money has gone into this climate change industry. Federal funding for climate change research, technology, international assistance, adaptation, has increased from 2.4 billion in 1993 to 11.6 billion in 2014, with an additional 26.1 billion for climate change programs and activities provided by the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act in 2009. We don't have two parties. We have one party and a whole lot of money is driven into this climate change business. Why? It's under the umbrella of United Nations Agenda 2030 Sustainable Development, the reshaping of the world for a new world order by the psychopaths who have, well, I guess a need to control every aspect of everybody's life on the planet. Yeah. So here, a leftist group called the Climate Policy Initiative issued a study that found that global investment in climate change reached $359 billion in that year, one year. And, well, if you need to know the year, it might be 2009, since I see that that is the last date. Um, tax subsidies that provide a 30% tax credit for wind and solar power. So add to those numbers about $8 billion to $10 billion a year. Then add billions more in costs attributable to the 29 states with renewable energy mandates that require utilities to buy expensive green energy. You really think, you really think it matters that Trump said, we won't sign on to the Paris Agreement? You really think that matters? My God. When states are implementing all of these climate change, all of the climate change legislation, the rules, the regulations, it doesn't matter. It, it's just, you know, it, uh, stop listening to what people say. Watch what is being done all over the place, not just in California. What's needed? An estimated $5 trillion. Well, even more than that for the Green New Deal. Do you know where a lot of that money is going to come from? your pensions. Tsunami of government money distorts science in hidden ways that even the scientists who are corrupted often don't appreciate. If you are a young, eager beaver researcher who decides to devote your life to the study of global warming, you're probably not going to do your career any good or get famous by publishing research that says the crisis, that crisis, it ain't happening. But if you've built bogus models that predict the crisis is getting worse by the day, then step right up and you'll get a multi-million dollar grant. Here's the real scandal of the near trillion dollars the governments have stolen from tra uh, taxpayers. And th th this is not just happening in the United States. It's happening all over. Taxpayers to fund climate change hysteria and research by the industry's own admission there has been almost no progress worldwide in combating climate change none none for decades okay so uh if you really believed that the earth is going to die in 12 years if you're somebody who says that and then you then say, people shouldn't fly, planes, plane travel, no good, uh, driving, no good. You should be taking public transportation.
But then you see that person who says that get into these SUVs and fly all over, you know, for their fundraisers, and I'll get to that person in a second. You will know that they are lying. They clearly do not believe what they are working on to force you to force a lifestyle upon you but their lifestyle won't change you know they are lying mm -mm -mm. has there ever been such a massive government expenditure that has had such minuscule returns on investment after three decades of research the only solution is for the world to stop using fossil fuels fossil fuels which is like saying we should stop growing food really ah the greatest minds of the world entrusted with hundreds of billions of dollars can only come up with a solution that would entail the largest government power grab in world history shutting down industrial production throwing perhaps billions of human beings into poverty that's the remedy so Stephen Moore a senior fellow at the Heritage Foundation and an economic consultant with Freedom Works ends with President Donald Trump should tell the so-called scientists that you're fired and we taxpayers should demand our money back. You're fired? Why did Donald Trump keep Obama scientists to produce the fourth assessment coming out of this the national climate change panel that we have that essentially puts out the same bogus science that the IPCC does why did he keep on those scientists because well he's part of the whole game the whole game So, you know, when you read these articles and then you come across someone who may be, you know, still stuck in the matrix, believing that, you know, President Trump is going to, to do something, uh, President Trump is not going to do anything. He, 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 and so many people get fooled by, ah, the crumbs that they throw. I'm building a wall. See, I'm down here and I'm showing you the wall. And, oh, great. Wow, man, we're in trouble. Um, the climate brainwashing of our youth. This is the real scandal here. This is the real tragedy. Just as the Nazis brainwashed the German children, the global warming movement, which hijacked environmentalism, has unfairly used their captive audiences in schools to influence their young minds. And yeah, what about the Hitler youth leaders in Nazi Germany? The manipulations that take place. It is adult responsibility. It is your responsibility to inform teach get the young to flip on their critical thinking switch that well unfortunately public schools have turned off really young now and the young really need the truth but you have people like David Suzuki who says things like this the North Pole once a wintry wonderland is no longer safe for Santa's workshop. Climate change is melting the snow and ice and the rising water is getting too close for comfort. Comfort. Santa must relocate fast to make sure that all the nice boys and girls still have a happy holiday. Wow. Yes, we have great responsibility to teach children as well as adults 
how to recognize the signs that they are being exploited, to recognize the difference between truth and propaganda. Propaganda is a persuasive and widespread message designed to advance the interests and agenda of a particular group, and that is what is happening. When you have control over mainstream media, you can do anything. When the CIA, when six corporations control mainstream media, well, you can overnight make a 16-year-old named Greta Thunberg famous. And when you have a deliberate agenda and you want a whole lot of attention put on a 16-year-old, well, she was 15 in 2018, that lonely little girl. And I've posted a video, the last video that I posted, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can click on that video. But, wow, in one year's time, this 16-year-old spoke to the European Commission, uh, has been invited to the United Nations. She met the Pope and Obama and other world leaders. She's traveled the world. Oh, did she always take a boat? Don't think so. Um, she's been all over. She's got the handlers. Well, you guys know what I'm talking about, which I will post on later. It's really... Yeah, I'm upset that we are, we are losing. And I know that I'm focusing so much on the agendas when I really should be focusing on the personal, how to raise one's consciousness, work through those issues that, yeah, is the baggage that we carry as adults because we can't get anywhere unless the individual raises their consciousness and works through those issues and begins to uh, develop a care that is generative not just speaking oh I care about things but uh, really what I just want to do is well smoke a joint drink a beer uh, and watch TV Some logical fallacies constantly used in man-made global warming propaganda ad hominem attacks, which either directly calls names, uh, you're just attacked with name calling, a climate denier, or you're, you're just trashed in whatever way that small-minded person wants to trash you, straw man, distort your opposition's argument and then knock it down, bandwagon, this technique states that there is a consensus of the majority in favor of the agenda and that anyone who disagrees is on the fringe and anyone who works for the agenda, you're on the winning team something wrong with the person who disagrees. Appeal to authority. We are told that we need to trust the experts without being given any direct information about the truth of the matter. The telltale sign is the lack of information. We are never told that there are other experts who disagree with the experts. Moving the goalpost when Mother Nature didn't cooperate with the global warming models and Earth stop warming after 1998, the global warming alarmists changed their slogan from global warming to climate change and even climate disruption. And appeal to sympathy, appeal to emotions. Okay. Uh, you... You continually talk about even normal weather events as abnormal. You change definitions. 
global warming to climate change. You play with people's emotions, their fear, guilt, pity. See, that's why I keep going back to the individual needs to do the work. Because all of this works because they understand the individual of the psyche. They understand how low that road is that most walk. And they understand that they can be easily manipulated. So every individual walking on that road needs to do that work to pull themselves up higher so that they don't get manipulated. And I listen to people who think that they're so smart, so informed, so intelligent. And all they do is believe the experts on mainstream media. It's frightening. So yes, of course, we should feel guilty about what we're doing to children. And, well, pity the poor polar bears who, I guess, are dying but they're not. They're actually quite a healthy breed, uh, a, a species. <laughs> Whip people into an emotional frenzy, blame storms on the climate deniers, D just throw out these irrational and incorrect assumptions. But when you have people who are not educated, and I don't, I'm not talking about formally. Oh, somebody can have degrees up the wazoo and really not be educated. Uh, there's a difference between being educated and indoctrinated. And when you are indoctrinated, you are following somebody else's beliefs. Educated means that, well, you have done the research yourself you have a basis, you've got a foundation of knowledge that allows you to see, okay, something is wrong with this person, what they just said. Uh, and, well, that basis of knowledge, it, it might not be, you know, the sole end point that you want to go to. Somebody says something, but you've got that educated mind that tells you, okay, I've got to research what that person said because that is very new information and I don't have any real points of reference to get that what that person said is untrue. So then you've got to do the research yourself. You can't follow anyone. You know, on either side, you can't. You've got to get that basis of knowledge for yourself. Uh, yeah, so eight of the 10 worst hurricanes in US history, it occurred in the late 1800s and early 1900s when the level of carbon dioxide was much lower than today. Wow, okay. Um, by the way, this site, it's not just an opinion site. This site is actually the authors Take a look at the authors of these articles. You know, they are uh, it's a slew of intelligent people. Scientists, academics. Um, they take advantage of the public's lack of scientific knowledge. That's why you need a basis of knowledge yourself. And the only way that you can get there is by doing that research yourself. Climate is a very complicated subject. Even some scientists who specialize in other disciplines such as biology may lack the confidence needed to make an informed decision. So they trust the experts. This enables the climate alarmists to make up fake terms, polar vortex, um, the science is settled and real science never settled. How many times have we come across these, um, terms, you know, Bob, uh, what is it? Bombogenesis or, uh, ah, we've got training storms now, training storms. 
well, that's the term to cover for the nanotechnology where we're seeing these blips of uh, precipitation just line up and they erupt out of nowhere. The training storms. Uh, keep ramping up that threat to make it more and more ominous. Yes. Uh, we've only got 12 years to live. We can teach young people how to spot propaganda by allowing them to analyze articles about the subject and spot evidence of these tactics. Dr. Patrick Moore calls this shameful exploitation of children to advance one's agenda, child abuse. It is child abuse. It is absolutely child abuse. And he tweeted, you don't seem to get it, that this is a fascist tactic. You are using innocent children for your own ends. And this is child abuse of a psychological nature. It's normally called brainwashing and you are guilty of participating in it. All the climate alarmists are guilty. Whether they're activists or scientists or leaders of nations or popes in the Vatican, they're all abusing children by telling them lies. Mao would be proud. You are clearly projecting your own psychosis on the children. Self-loathing is a heavy burden. Why don't you express it through adults rather than abusing innocence? Dr. Moore got it right. Yes, he did. So, experts. All experts serve the state and the media and only in that way do they achieve their status. Every expert follows his master for all former possibilities for independence have been gradually reduced to nil by present society's mode of organization. All experts serve their masters. All reporters, all investigative journalists, all government officials now are serving a master. How did this manifest? It manifested because we were ignorant, we were indoctrinated, and we, well, you know, I'll speak for myself. It took me a long time, a very long time, to step out of the matrix completely, you know? And once you begin to see how indoctrinated and inculcated in all of these cultural myths. In my case, it was doctor knows best. Well, guess what? My career was destroyed by doctor knows best. Believing that expert in the white coat, taking medication that gave me a stroke. When you begin to see through all of the lies, that's when you are, uh, well, it's a process of awakening. And I guess many people do get scared and then just say, you know, I'm going right back into the matrix and that's it. Many people are a lot lazy and they go back into the matrix and because they want to believe that ah uh, that guy in the uh, executive office you know uh, that president thing he's gonna fix it you know many people are wrapped up in their beliefs whether religious beliefs political beliefs um, because it allows that individual to sit back and do nothing well the sitting back and do nothing it's gotten us right here. And the celebrities, yes, celebrity promotion helps to mobilize effect and desire in support of environmental causes, focusing attention on splashy, sensation-filled spectacle. Yay! Oh, I love her. Yeah? So you believe her? <laughs> okay. Um, 
Yeah, the splashy, sensation-filled spectacle supporting the win-win narrative and thereby conjuring an aura of environmentalism as exciting, exotic, erotic, glamorous, sexy even. <sighs> when people believe these people, when people are wowed by these people, uh, they're walking the low road. They're walking the low road. When people believe the expert scientists that mainstream media trot out and get to talk their few minutes about, <gasps> we've got to do something because the world's going to end in 12 years. Do you know? Okay, you don't listen to the celebrities, but you listen to the experts. But you don't have a basis of knowledge for your own self. So, you're believing these experts. And if that's where you stop and you refuse to look at all of the experts on the other side who are uh, saying something very different than these experts that you always see on mainstream media, that is the height of laziness. It, you're not informed. You are just putting in more information that confirms that bias in your head. So, the children being indoctrinated in school? One, One of the questions, questions we always get about, about this book is, is why did we send why scientists disagree, disagree about global warming to all science teachers around the country? country. Well, well, in 2016, 2016 there was a survey done of middle and high school science teachers. teachers. Some of the results showed that 27% of teachers actually still taught that there's a debate. 47% of the teachers actually allowed the students to debate the causes of global warming so they could come up with their own idea. The problem is this is soon going to be ending. With the adoption of Next Generation Science Standards, or NGSS, they are now telling kids what to think instead of how to think. think. An, An example, example of this is under human activity, activity where they're telling students global warming is man-made because of burning fossil fuels. What, what they, they then do is tell them to look at the data and come up with that same conclusion or problems on how to solve that problem. They're not telling them or giving them the tools to research and observe and come up with their own conclusions. So one of the reasons we sent this book was we wanted to let teachers know that we are supporting them when they teach all the facts of science and not just one fact or the politically approved version of science. Okay. So, when was this? 2017. It's already happening. Do parents not know what these public schools have turned into? Well, that's everybody's responsibility to inform the parents who don't know. Now, I agree with an awful lot who left comments below my vaccine video that I posted on all of these um, mothers in particular, uh, not to say there weren't fathers there, but who showed up at the Capitol, Governor Cuomo's office in New York, and they were not happy that their kids were being prevented from going to school unless they were fully vaccinated. And a lot of people left comments saying they shouldn't be going to school anyway. I completely agree. But we've got so many agendas that, well, they overlap. Um, yes, all parents need to be informed. Your children are being destroyed in public schools. They are being destroyed. Their minds are being destroyed. Their brains are being turned off and they are indoctrinated to the point where whatever is put into that brain, that's it. They don't, they are not taught to critically think, to examine issues or subjects 
They are being treated like robots and the input of information they cannot debate. That's the information that goes into their... Do you understand that their individuality is being destroyed? Oh my God. Well, yeah, there's an awful lot going on. There's an awful lot going on. And everything has gotten worse. It is hard to combat an army that is, well, you've got the Fed printing money. <laughs> yeah, you've got the government stealing money by force. It's always by force. Taxes. And they use the money to implement their agendas. Well, most of us have no resources. So, how do you, how is it possible to fight this machine? This machine? Well, what really needed to happen early on was holding people accountable, but that never happened in terms of how many times we were lied to by our leaders, quote unquote, and our government officials. The corruption that was very clear in the early 80s, and no doubt in the 70s, I was a little bit too young then, but we never did anything. So we've helped manifest this nightmare we're living. And if you don't recognize your contribution to this nightmare, you will never do anything different. We need different. We need change. We need it fast. I will link below to everything and I'm going to pick up on this topic in my next video.